I thought legally there was a maximum for a residential property of three cats. Property manager Andrea is heading round to a central city flat where the tenants have vacated and not only tidied up, but made a few repairs. Oh no. I can see here the bad jib patch. The paint's not a paint match and they've just gone over a section. They haven't actually painted the wall. End result is, it looks like a patchwork quilt. That is the face of disappointment. It's what's known in student circles as a patch and match. Very badly prepared. Property managers nationwide thought they had this practice stamped out in 2006. You can see the lines down here. But it looks like it's resurfaced in Dunedin with a vengeance. Unfortunately, it's not just that one area. One, two, three, a huge six, 10, 13, 14, 18, 19, 22, 23, God bless them, 23 patch marks in a total of two rooms. Whereas the downstairs resembles a squash court, one upstairs room is more like a shower room, turning a plasterer's wet dream into a landlord's wet nightmare. Love a bucket full of water. Right now would be the worst time for some prospective tenants to turn up earlier than expected. Let's come on down. Property manager Prue's tenants' trees have been given a severe trimming. I, do, I don't think there are words to describe this. The tenants of this delightful property had advised Prue they allowed their neighbour to trim back the trees on the boundary of it. But look what they've done. This is horrendous. They look like Neolithic prototype rugby goalposts, complete with crossbar. Look at the little garden, all destroyed. If this arborist was a hairdresser, people would be asking for their money back. He could have sheared just that other side, anything that was of an annoyance, over his fence. You're allowed to go to the fence. I might put these on. But you are not allowed to do this. This being damaged well beyond what was allowed by Prue's tenant. So I believe the person in this house could be up the creek without a paddle. It's one thing to desecrate a living tree, it's another to leave all the branches lying around and trample on a kid's garden. Most upsettingly, in amongst the fallen branches, the poor old cat's grave. Look at the hammock, the beautiful hammock there, belonging to the tenants, sitting there in the tree, so they'd sit by the little creek, read a book, enjoy, look upon the veggie garden, all those things. And now look at it. I don't know what was in these people's minds, so I will be speaking with the police and the solicitor about this. I am just disgusted. While Prue considers her legal options, an invocagle, Inspire Property Management's Tracy is considering how long it'll take to get her first inspection today. Hello? Are you decent? Decent is the word. Inspection number one goes like a dream. Everything's looking great. Inspection number two. And here we have the lovely Kevin. Kev, you beauty, you. Okay, so it all looks good in here. Flat number three is just next door. So everything all looks good. And that is a hat trick of sensational Invercargill inspections. Now Tracy's heading to Bluff. It's less an inspection, more of a crisis meeting. The property manager and the owner clashed and they both fired each other. And um, I got a phone call saying, I need a property manager, I need it now. Here we are at Bluff. Ready to take on the next challenge. It's going to be a challenge, all right. The state of the letterbox is a bad omen. It's rotted right out. To hell with the rotten letterbox. Owner Tony's got bigger fish to fry. In recent years, property maintenance here has been practically nil. 
We didn't buy it as an investment, we bought it as a family home and rented out until we could actually make the move. Unfortunately in this case we did not have a good property manager before we met Tracy. It actually caused us a lot, a lot of nightmares. You can't even do anything. See how yeah. spongy that is? Yes. Oh yeah, I agree that yeah. that needs but that can be fixed. You know, you rip the frame out. Yes, stick a new frame build. in there. Yeah. And same with that one there. Long experience tells Tracy a lazy five grand ought to fix this. No trouble. And then it's done and no, it's you don't can't afford it. No, okay. No. And it would be I want to do a lot of it myself. Because I've got a very bad back. I can't really do much. But this is just the outside. What will the inside do to Tony's already compromised wallet? Okay, here we go. Wow. So we've got mould on curtains and stuff like that. The house hasn't been ventilated properly. Yeah. Rubbish everywhere. The tenants have tidied up before leaving, but they have left the place dirty with broken chattels and evidence of damage everywhere. A bit of a hole on that up there as well. But see, things like this, so the tenants don't tell you, you only really pick this up on inspections. So it's some surprise they didn't actually ask them to be replaced. Well, they leave any dunny paper? A little here? bit. It makes me laugh how people always leave the toilet brushes behind. It's, like, it's gross. While a dubious looking toilet brush has been left behind, Tony's prized ship's binoculars haven't. There you go. Binoculars. There was a big set. Tony can see straight through that little scam, and it looks like Tracy can see straight through the wall. There's a big hole in the wall here that wasn't here before, so it's a major concern. It's wet down there, it's rotted, and there's a hell of a draft coming out of it. Said the cleaning hasn't been done that fantastically. Um, in this particular case, the cupboards haven't been wiped out, the freezer hasn't been wiped out, there's still rubbish on the floor. So things like that, I personally don't think is good enough. With the average property in Bluff hovering under the 200 grand mark and repairs hoovering up thousands of dollars, Tony and Liz are understandably shocked. Click property manager Andrea has a rental with a roof leak, no back garden and badly repaired holes in the walls. The paint end result is... It looks like a patchwork quilt. A prospective tenant has turned up for a look, a little earlier than expected with her friend. Hello, how are you? The woman and her young son have been living in a church office with Dad and their three other kids. They're desperate for a house, but it remains to be seen just how desperate. So I don't know whether you um, can actually see here, there is some patches on the walls. The tenants have taken upon themselves to try and fix it up. They haven't done a very good job at um, filling the areas. The 23 holes in the walls clearly don't impress. Neither does the optimistically named back garden, with its 23 varieties of weeds and a railway. And upstairs, 23 litres of leak water are even less desirable. So we've got four really good sized bedrooms up here. There is a leak with this heavy rain. We've got the roofers looking into this as well. So don't worry, this one will be dried and cleaned. The Dunedin property market is tight, but not that tight. Can Andrea get these house hunters over the line? I, do, I don't think there are words to describe this. In her week from hell in Christchurch, property manager Prue has left the case of the over-enthusiastic tree surgeon to her lawyers, the police, the council and karma. A couple of days later, she's taking associate Chev to a rural property where it's not the trees that need culling, it's the cats. Oh, there's one. There's... Oh, my gosh, there's... Oh, one, there's more. Two, Look. Two, four, six. One's over there. There's thousands. The smell is indescribable. Oh, it's so bad. Cat droppings are unpleasant at the best of times, but these guys all seem to be suffering from upset tummies. This is vile. That makes me really angry. The reasons for the visit are manifold. Cats are known for not giving a damn where they perform their ablutions, and this is a high-income area. Prue needs to do something. 
They just don't look well, do they? There's more over in there. There's a cat head over there. Horrified, the girls have seen enough, avoiding the cat nuggets. Oh. They make their way back to the car. I thought legally there was a maximum for a residential property of three cats. I'm, I'm not sure if that's still current. She's found the cat-infested property's tenant is allowed cats after learning from the SPCA there is no bylaw regarding numbers. We can all relax knowing that now we can have 40,000 cats in a two-bedroom flat and it's all cool. A couple of days later, Prue's off to inspect an earthquake-damaged property where the tenants have finally had to move out. The property isn't just uninhabitable, it's literally falling to bits, hence the hard hat. All the skirting boards have swelled because the water's just... the walls are just going... It appears one of the sewerage pipes has failed and a rogue one has escaped. Oh, and a drape, so people can't stare at one in the shower. This has been leaking right the way through from upstairs. The main features of this flat are mould, funguses and general filth. And you've got all of this going on, mould everywhere. The, these are the challenges <coughs> that we were facing um, trying to keep this at bay and it wasn't the tenant's fault, it was just the nature of the beast. And if we check here, so all the walls ostensibly were porous and so we end up with this and that mess on the carpet. And this has been like this for a very, very long time. Prue clearly can't put anyone back in this house. And until the powers that be decide what to do with it, the landlord is without income. We couldn't repair because to put more money in was more money leeching out of the owner's pocket. So we had to do our best to just try and keep at things. And if you look at this, the water, because this all broke away, has been leaching into the bench and the malamine. And this is what we've got. She's just got some good news. We're just about to demolish and rebuild. So it's going to be a very exciting time. Click property manager Andrea has more on her plate than a US diplomat. 23 holes in the walls, a roof leak, and a shambles of a back garden. Will her prospective tenants stay or walk away? Are you wanting to move sort of as soon as possible? ASAP. <laughs> well, that's good. Then we'll, um, when I get back to the office, I'll get the wheels in motion. Mum's been advised that when Andrea says she'll set something right, you can take that to the bank. She's in. This place is rented. Those guys look like a nice bunch. They love the area as well as the property. It's got beautiful big bedrooms for her four kids to be able to have a bit of space to play, but let's just hope they're not artistically inclined to actually want to redecorate the walls. A few days later... Hello, how are you? Good. It's OK? Fine. Yeah? Cool. Very good. Very good. So, can I just come and have a look at the, the painting in the, in the room? The 23 holes have gone. Much better. Yeah. yeah, the painter did a great job. Upstairs, what leak? It's as dry as a wooden god. The leak appears to be resolved, yeah. <laughs> it's a happy home with happy tenants. Makes my day fabulous. Andrew is proud to give this lovely family their first New Zealand home. Back in Christchurch, Prue's week from hell is a distant memory. Work on demolishing the rotten property has been fast and furious, and a couple of months later, the formerly feral phoenix has risen from the ashes. Wow! I wonder if we're allowed in. Prue's literally about to get blown away. Wow! Wow! This is fantastic. It seems the builders have been very busy. From a pile of concrete rubble, the rotten flats have risen again. I'm loving this. And the change in the layout is so clever. God, they've done well. And mould free. She can already visualise a stylish, modern apartment with modern decor. Prue's very happy. Here's to new beginnings.
Back in Bluff, it's a grey day, but the future's bright for property manager Tracy and her Aussie landlords Tony and Liz. We've done the insulation, we've fixed up all the holes in the walls, and we've got some lovely new double glazed windows installed. We've done some painting and we've got some new carpet, and as you can see, we've done the gardens. The garden looks magnificent, and it comes with garden ornaments, courtesy of the neighbour's dog, who got through this hole in the fence. So I'll just get a photo of that to remind me when I get back to make sure I get that fixed up. We don't want that dog coming through here any more than we need to be, especially not when you start walking in that. In the unlikely event someone brings something objectionable in on a shoe, nobody will ever notice. We've kept the lovely Axminster that I couldn't talk the landlord out of replacing just yet. In some of our bedrooms, we've got new carpet in four of our bedrooms. Down here, this was our big hole that looked like someone had put their foot through it. Um, so that's all now been sorted. All the holes in the room have been filled. So from here I need to get the curtains rehung. Um, I need to get a cleaner through and then we start looking for tenants. Go Tracy. This place is ready to roll for some brand new renters.